at least once a day, I get someone who writes into me and says, Julie, talk to people about the smell of death. Let's talk about what people might be referring to versus what's actually happening. So generally speaking, I would say death does not have a smell, but there are certain diseases, certain cancers, certain things that happen in the body that can make it seem like death has a smell. So generally speaking, when a body is dying, when a body is shutting down, there are metabolic changes, like I always talk about, chemical changes that are happening in the body's chemistry. And those biological changes are causing the breath, the skin, and body fluids to give off a certain scent. So it often smells something like nail polish remover, like, a, like ammonia-ish. However, there are other things like ketosis or certain types of cancer that cause ketosis. I talk about ketosis a lot at the end of life that can cause them to smell kind of fruity and their breath can smell kind of fruity. Whereas with liver disease or any kind of kidney disease, sometimes they can smell a little bit like bleach. Again, this is different for everybody. I definitely do not consider this like everyone will have these smells, but it's important to talk about it because enough people write into me saying they wanna know about it and why it's happening. Now, a lot of times certain types of diseases and cancers can have tumors. And if they're ulcerating tumors, those tumors can have an unpleasant or, or bad smell. A lot of times we use like crushed antibiotics or powders to help with the smell, but it doesn't always work. Another thing that's not talked about a lot is chemotherapy and how that can make you smell. So certain chemotherapies can make you have a certain scent or make your breath smell a certain way, or you just give you a certain type of body odor and not many people know about that. And the last two things I see in a lot of my hospice patients that cause them to smell would be wounds. So wounds can have a smell, specifically if they are infected, which is what we would look for as hospice nurses. And really healing wounds is not our job in hospice. We don't expect to heal the wound, but if there is an odor, we wanna help with that odor because we don't want the wound to be infected. So there are things we can do to help with that. And then a lot of times our patients are constricted. They can't, they, their, their hands are stuck like this, their arms are stuck like this because of the disease they've had for many, many years, like dementia or Parkinson's disease or MS, they're constricted. And when they're constricted like that, when you pull open their arm to wash, there can be a scent just from the skin so constricted for so long. It's hard to describe the scent, but if you work in healthcare, you know what I mean. And there's not much you can do about that except for try to keep your loved one and patient as clean and as dry as possible. And then of course, taking care of a loved one who is dying on hospice, you will run into them being incontinent. So you having to clean up their urine and their bowel movements and of course, those things smell. And urine specifically will smell stronger towards the end of life because of the concentration of the urine. So those smells kind of add into all of it. Maybe not great oral hygiene, which is no one's fault. You're doing the best you can, but all of those things can add into the quote unquote smell of death. Generally speaking, as a hospice nurse, I would not say there is a smell to death, but there are definitely smells that go along with diseases and the death and dying process. So some cancer cells do produce and release smells called BOCs that humans can't really smell, but research has shown promising results that possibly dogs can. So the idea is dogs have a certain ability to smell out certain types of cancer in some people. So one research study showed that a dog persistently licked lesion that ended up being melanoma. And there was a study in Japan that showed that dogs could smell people's breath in their stool and detect rectal cancer. There've been other instances with lung cancer, ovarian cancer, prostate cancer. So of course there needs to be more studies done about this. This is not a proven thing that all dogs can smell out cancer, but with these certain case studies and these certain studies over the years, there is promising research that dogs could help us detect cancer in the future. Dogs really are our best friends. <music>